We have with us our chief guest, Dr. Alok Tripathi. Dr. Alok Tripathi is the additional director general of archaeology, archaeological survey of India, New Delhi. His earlier to be the become the uh, additional director general, he is uh, specialization of uh, underwater archaeology and he was the department of history and archaeology in the Assam University in Silcha. He is known for excavation on Bhutshala, Ayodhya, Gyanubapi and Dwarka. Being uh, the marine archaeology or the underwater archaeology, he is very much associated with that and he is associated with the Pumpuhar survey also. To him, there are a number of books, a few of them are the Gyanwapi ASI report of 2023, and uh, Marine Archaeological Perspectives of the Indian Ocean, Expressions in the Indian Art, that is with uh, Mr. B. R. Mani, the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Sites of Divines Act of 1958, and many more books, particularly the Marine Archaeology, recent advances like that. He has edited more than 10 books, authored and edited more than 10 books, about 20 technical reports, over 75 research papers. And as I said, he is currently holding the position of additional director general of archaeology in Archaeological Survey of India. Brother Harris Marni, my family members on the dais. This bird I had picked up from page 255 where he remember all those who helped him in growing in his life. And those who are sitting on the dais are very close relative of mine. It's a family business. S. <laughs> Subbaramanji, my elder in Archaeological Survey of India, the family where I born, the family which made me archaeologist, which made me professor, which made me ADG, and so I am standing here. So we belong to the same family and we have a very close bond. Professor Krishna, he was my guardian during my PhD and we are also from the MS University of Baroda family. And again, the close relation with Nagarajji in this mythic society. And when I come here, I feel at home. And today, standing here in this historical hall, I feel privileged that I had occasion to learn from the peoples who are sitting on the dais. Many of them, my seniors who are sitting in audience, who have been my guru, from whom I learn, and they have made me to stand here in front of you. I pay my respect to all of you. I was reading this book, very interesting. Professor Krishnan has told about what all is there. I'm not going to repeat, but I'll draw your attention to some of the points and I will also try to tell the way he has written in the book. As he said, it's not a chronological description of what all he did in his life. It's in a very interesting way. He talks about his work. At the same time, he talks about his family. Then he talks about the people who are working with him. So when he talks about, and in a way, this book is not only about his life, if you read it carefully, it is the history of heritage of almost one century. He talked about all those great persons who have worked in the field of conservation, in the field of archaeology, in the field of art history. And while writing about them, you will find that he is not only the conservator, but he has equal authority in architecture, history, paintings, their style, and many other things. And I tell you honestly, if I write a book, 
I would not dare to venture about the conservation. If I write on Ajanta, I'll write only on the structure or the sculptures, my field. Because that's not my expertise. But he has written about everything with a great confidence and clarity. That shows that while he was conserving the paintings, he was going deep in every other aspect of that structure. And that makes a big difference. So it was not like the Italians which came in 2021, 20, who just came, worked on the paintings and left. And the mistake what they made, of course, that was the time when they had a limited knowledge. Then he and his team and the ASI corrected that. When I was in institute, which is School of Archaeology, which became Institute of Archaeology, we were taught the works which he and his team had done. Because it was in a school of archaeology, he has written here also, it was decided that conservation, chemical conservation should also be the part of training of archaeologists and where he taught his students. And he created a number of generations of archaeologists having an understanding of chemical conservation. I also studied there. I was fortunate to work there and I am also holding charge of Institute of Archaeology where we teach chemical conservation and still we teach the great conservation works which he and his team has done in the past. The most unfortunate thing was that we never met before. When I joined ASI in 1987, he retired from ASI in the same year. Then I wanted, you talked about O.P. Agrawalji. Fortunately, I am holding the charge of Director General National Research Conservation Laboratory. And we wanted to invite him. And I called him and he said I would have loved to come and discuss with conservators, but because of my health, I cannot travel. And I thank Mythic Society that it has given this opportunity to meet him in person. Though we learn from him, from his work, but never had a chance to meet. And today, it's a great occasion, not only to release this book, but to meet a person who is a Prata Ismarni, who has taught, who had helped in our growth to meet in person and to speak in front of him. That is something which is very difficult. If you have a glance of his writing, you will find out what the personality he carries, what is the way he thinks, how deep-rooted he is. Even the chapterization, first he talks about the award, which is the most recent thing, and then straight away he goes to his hometown. That is something if you talk somebody here, he will say, I live in Delhi. He will never talk about where I was born, where my family is, where my tradition, grandfather, great grandfather. But despite everything, he is still deeply rooted with his traditions. He talks about his school and his memory is fantastic. The way he writes, the way he remembers names, events, as he said, the marks, what he got. Even it's difficult for me to remember how much marks I had got in the masters. But his memory is wonderful. He remember everything and he gives credit to each and everyone. Something unbelievable. He's talking about egg hosh. At the same time, he talk about the boy who was cooking at Fardapur. Once you reach on this, you just forget niche wale kon hai, kya tha, kush nahi. But you see that he remember everything. I'm also fortunate to have worked in Aurangabad circle, worked at Ajanta. So when I read the book, I visualize everything. I see that traveling from Fardapur to Ajanta and working in the caves and these all things. So it's a fantastic reading. And the way which he has written, 
you don't know where you go. I'm an underwater archaeologist, so it's like a, you know, diving or going on the waves. You go here and then the guard down and then you move left and then go right and then you enjoy that thing. So he has very professionally, as a great human, has recounted and recalled everything, presented in a book in a form, I am sure, which everybody is going to like it. As he said, I am sure that many young persons are going to get motivated. He write about Dr. Paramsivam, Paramsivan from uh, Chennai Museum, who ventured in this field. And the field which he selected, painting, the most delicate work when you talk about conservation. If you talk, for example, it's like a Doc, uh, like a neurosurgeon and a doctor. So, the something which is as delicate as brain is a painting, where a minor variation can make a big difference. If you are doing conservation of a stone, you put 3% ammonia or 4% ammonia, doesn't make much difference because after two rains it will be washed away. But on a painting, in a painting, if you put a brush a little, one millimeter left or right, it is going to change the feature. And that work he has done with perfection. He made experiments in that time when nobody was venturing in this field. And today, his works have become case studies for us and for conservators heritage lovers. So his service to the heritage are something for which we are thankful to government of India that it decided to honor him and recognize that contribution he has made to the country. Here I would like to say one thing, little deviation. It is most unfortunate with we Indians that after almost 80 years since our independence, our bent of mind is still that European kind of thing. As an archaeologist, I see when we read history of archaeology, we get only few names. I have no hesitation in saying in public, Alexander Cunningham, John Marshall and Wheeler. After Wheeler, nothing existed in the history of India, if you read the books. As such, no Indian has done nothing, because I don't know why Indians are hesitate to recognize the great contributions made by the Indians. And one example which I would like to give you very recent, two days back, many Indian archaeologists celebrated 100 years of Harappan civilization. Why? Because a British archaeologist has published an article in Illustrated London News. We are celebrating it. We did not celebrate the great contribution of Dayaram Sahani, who excavated Harappa as superintending archaeologist from 5th January to 10th February 1921. It was his excavation which led to the discovery of Harappan civilization. Next year, in 1922, <coughs> Rakhal Das Banerjee, another Indian, excavated at Mohanjodaro. But these reports were not published in those annual reports of ASI. In 1920-21 annual reports, there is no mention of Harappa excavation. So only Marshall writes after three years in Illustrated London News and unfortunately some Indian archaeologists celebrate as the centenary of Harappan civilization. We are still hesitate to give credit to Indian archaeologists of their great contribution. We still feel that when a British has gave us a certificate, we should celebrate it. And that is exactly with the work done by him. There is very less recognition. 
little after the government has decided to give Padmashri, it's a great decision. And there are many more archaeologists, conservators, excavators who have done great work. But our mindset is, is still captive of Mekale's education system that we fail to go beyond what is being taught to us in the classroom. And in the classroom, we are being taught that only. So I am very happy and this mythic society is a place where they are thinking to change this mindset, to change this history. And I am thankful to society and Nagaraji that I am being associated with history of Bharat, the project which this society is doing. So this is a place from where the change has to start. It's a great occasion to have him here. I think it is a right place where we are having this uh, ceremony and this release of the book because that's the place where the people having a free thinking, looking towards our own roots, our tradition, our culture, having faith in our own capabilities, making experiments. We may make mistakes, but we learn our own. So, he is an example of that, that he took bold steps, he worked dedicatedly, he produced the result, and today we all are here to pay our respect to him through this book which has been released here. So, I thank once again to my organization, Archaeological Survey of India, which is the premier organization for the preservation of cultural heritage in the country, to our family, to my institution, to Mythic Society, and to all of you. And it's really an occasion to cherish and hope we will take many things from here and we will continue to the direction which has shown to us. Thank you. Ivatina, a Karakam Dali. We say Shatiniki Lagi Yaran Karibi Kunjoch and Madaga, Namik Dandi the Hesero, Dr. Adok Tripatu, Sartar the Kentam Nutu, Dil Takan Tauro, or the Adanta, Kelsakaratum Gurmudje, Pursuk Matum Bartaranta, Namgu and Seri Hanust, Samstia, Ketra, the Shuit of Vinagra, the phone Madaga, Takna, Kondu, Mamata Dehili, the Ekarakum Poster, and Benguri Bundu, Karpundal Pakwaisi. Atyanta Chanagi Tama, Vipra and Vector Sidare, Aurigo Anantan to Daniwan.